a brand new movie based on a video game is out. And this one's hoping to join the ranks of such iconic classics as The Need for Speed, Max Payne, Assassin's Creed, Uncharted, the live-action Super Mario Brothers movie, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, Street Fighter the movie, Warcraft, Double Dragon, Gran Turismo. Wait, that one was genuinely good. I don't know how, but it was. You should watch that movie instead of what I'm about to talk about. And who better to direct this film than, of course, checks notes, Eli Roth. The guy that made the Hostel films and Thanksgiving. What? Could go wrong. Let's talk about it in a spoiler-free review. The moment that maybe two people were waiting for is here. Borderlands the movie. Starring a whole bunch of actors that Eli Roth must really like because they don't match the characters they're playing in the slightest. Before I start running my claptrap too much, if you wouldn't mind shooting that subscribe button and make sure to pop that notification bell so that these videos show up in your feed in the future if you like what I'm putting out. Because this is based on a popular IP by Gearbox, it's a video game franchise, it's, it's gone on multiple consoles, spanned several games, and even spin-off games, there's obviously multiple ways you can approach a movie like this. I have the same approach every single time though. If it's based on a video game, if it's based on a cartoon, if it's based on a comic or a Broadway play, it doesn't matter to me. I'm judging this movie standalone full stop. But I almost always find that if you stay true to the material that came before, your movie ends up being better for it. I am familiar with the Borderlands games. I know these characters. I've played a couple of them just a little bit here and there. They're looter shooters. They have a cell shaded very colorful, poppy look. So when I saw the trailer for this movie, I thought, all right, we have a kind of a budget Guardians of the Galaxy going on, a ragtag group of people. It's very fun and playful, high octane stuff. That seems pretty fair. That seems to kind of reflect what's happening in the games. The cast, however, does not. We have Kate Blanchett playing Lilith. Kate is no spring chicken. She still looks fantastic as Lilith, make no mistake about that. But as a leading lady, and someone who I like in other films, she's not doing it for me here. Her line delivery does not match the dialogue that's coming out of her mouth. It's not near as edgy, as sharp, as creative as it should be. And I don't think the juvenile dialogue is helping in the slightest. Kate's also going to be narrating this film, and my god does she seem bored. She's putting in about as much work as Dakota Johnson put into Madam Web. And that's, that's not a compliment. <laughs> Joining her on her misadventure is Kevin Hart as Roland. Kevin Hart known to be a funny guy. You take him, you put him in a serious role where he's an action commando type character. It's not really fitting. They do make a comment in the movie that he's the smallest soldier of the group. But outside of that, there is no reason for Kevin Hart to be playing this character. Especially when Roland is a tough as nails big brute in the games. So what was the point of this change? What does it bring to the table? How does it elevate the material? It doesn't. He's just in it because it's Kevin Hart, and apparently that's a driving factor to get people to the theaters. Maybe not so, looking at the box office predictions going into this weekend. Uh, I love my Jamie Lee Curtis. She's also in this as a brainiac scientist type. She's okay. She's actually playing a character, which is impressive. She has a weird voice that she's doing. Not a lot of screen time for her, and when she's there, it's kind of unmemorable, unremarkable, like... Pretty much everything else in this film. The man, the myth, the legend himself, Jack Black, is also in this. He's had a good run over his career, spanning different generations of love from adoring fans, whether it's Tenacious D, voicing Bowser and singing the Peaches song, playing his crazy spazzy characters like he does in movies like Orange County or in Tropic Thunder. Jack Black's awesome. So it kind of hurts me to say that he's not so awesome as Claptrap. He's got, a, obviously, some voice modulation going on. He's got some okay dialogue from time to time, but it's just not really working well. But that's less of a Jack Black problem and more of a movie problem. I think the strongest character in this movie is Tiny Tina, played by Ariana Greenblatt. The last thing I saw this actress in was Barbie, and I hated her guts in the film, so... <laughs> 
it's a testament to the acting that I really enjoyed her character here. She's very playful, silly, a wild card at the end of the day. But it's not enough to salvage what's happening here. This team dynamic is almost non-existent. Everyone looks kind of miserable going through the motions in this film. And it doesn't help that the movie itself has a very cheap quality to it. Everything feels very green screened. There's not a lot of punch to anything. It's just all across the board kind of a miss. The casting, the script, the overall storyline, which is asinine, by the way. It's a complete shit show. There are so many holes in this storyline, so many things that don't add up. It almost tricked me into thinking M. Night's new film, Trap, is competently made. It's not. I'm being dramatic. By far the most half-ass, worthless performance in this film, though, is by the villain Atlas. Holy shit, there's phoning a role in, and then there's doing whatever Edgar Ramirez did. This dude is on autopilot. Beyond the bizarre casting choices, what does the film bring to the table for an audience that potentially wants to get out on a rainy Sunday afternoon with the fam? Well, it's PG-13. It's an hour 40 and some change, something like that. It, it runs decently quick and, you know, it couldn't be done fast enough. And I will say, for the most part, it's a watchable mess. It's not like the worst, most insulting thing ever. It's just so basic and so formulaic. There is almost zero creativity on display. You've seen everything in this before, except for maybe whatever the hell was happening with that ending. As far as the action goes, there's a range, there's a spectrum. Sometimes it's solid, sometimes it's actually really cool. There's a pretty sweet battle sequence in the middle of the film where all the characters are jumping around, doing their Guardians, Avengers thing, and it's pretty slick. Eli does a good job filming the action, it's well choreographed, there's some great tag teaming going on, but then we get to the end again and it gets just so stupid. The PG-13 on this movie is a head scratcher too. This felt like a movie that screamed make me rated R, especially with Roth at the helm, but because of the planet we're on, Pandora, not to be confused with Pandora from Avatar, it just felt like the training wheels were on the whole time. If you want a quick story synopsis, short for synopsis, Atlas is a, uh, a quadrillionaire or something. I don't know how much money this guy has. He's after his daughter, Tiny Tina, who's given him the slip because Roland helped break her out of a jail. It's of paramount importance he has her because she is required to open a vault that's on Pandora. A vault that everyone's been trying to find and open for centuries. It requires keys, it requires nonsense, it requires shenanigans, and eventually we will get ourselves to this point. Standing in Atlas's way though are the Suicide Squad. Made up of Lilith, Roland, Claptrap, and a few others along the way. If you want my personal taste, I don't like Suicide Squad. Not to be confused with THE Suicide Squad. I would put this movie as better than the former, but not near as good as the latter. This is a useless waste of time that you can put on at home, streaming on Netflix, and watch two-thirds of it, and then shut it off, because that's about all it's good for. And I think I've said about enough, but if you want to hear my spoiler breakdown of this video, and it's gonna be a fun one, make sure to subscribe. That's gonna go up in a couple days, and it'll definitely be worth your time if you're interested in hearing about it without having to put down the money to see it. Or maybe you just want to live vicariously through my pain and suffering. Either way, I'm here for you. Like the video if you liked it. If you really liked it, maybe give a super thanks down below or become a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies or right here via the join button. There's there's perks. There's, there's a good amount of perks, actually. And I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, that I've been building up over the last couple months. Would love to have you there as well. All right. See you next time.